Welcome friends to another video on Medcology tutorials. Today we will be talking about um, neurohumoral transmission which is a very important topic. So the topic that we will be covering today will be neurohumoral transmission. Now what is neurohumoral transmission? Neurohumoral transmission basically is the communication that takes place between neurons. So suppose we have a set of neurons and um, they are communicating with each other. Then the communication that takes place between these neurons happens through a process known as neurohumoral transmission. Now before we get in detail about neurohumoral transmission, I would like to talk about the concept of synapses. What are synapses? Now we all are familiar with the basic structure of the neuron and we know that synapse is nothing but the gap between two sets of neurons. What is the two, What are the two sets of neurons? It is the gap between axon end bulb and dendrite of another neuron so it is the gap between axon end bulb of one neuron and dendrite of the other neuron and if the gap is between axon end bulb of one neuron and dendrite of another neuron we called it synapse but if it is between axon end bulb if it is between axon and bulb and muscle then we call this particular gap as neuromuscular junction we call that gap as neuromuscular junction now let us see a basic structure of how these synapses are and how they are classified so when I talk of axon and bulb I am talking about this particular neuron and in this neuron we have vesicles and in these vesicles we have neurotransmitters which are stored the other neuron that is the dendrite is over here and it has receptors that will uh, bind to the released neurotransmitter so this is the axon and bulb and this is the dendrite now how are synapses classified so let us see the classification of synapses or synapses so synapses are classified into two types broadly one is electrical and the other one is chemical electrical and chemical in electrical synapse we find that the synaptic cleft is less than 0 0.2 nanometers so one important point you have to remember here is synaptic cleft is less than is less than 0 0.2 nanometers whereas in chemical it is between 10 to 20 nanometers and here chemicals are released for communication or impulse generation and these chemicals are called as neurotransmitters these chemicals are called as neurotransmitters these chemicals are called as neurotransmitters now let us quickly recap what the synapses uh, how the synapses are classified they are classified into two types one is electrical and the other one is chemical electrical this particular gap is called the synaptic cleft so in electrical synapses this particular gap is less than 0 0.2 nanometers whereas in chemical synapses this particular gap is 10 to 20 nanometers and chemical 
mediators are released chemical uh, agents are released called as neurotransmitters that carry the impulse from one area to the other area now we will see what are the steps involved in neurohumoral transmission and how neurohumoral transmission takes place so let us see the steps involved in neurohumoral transmission so when we are studying neurohumoral transmission we need to take the axon end bulb and we need to take the uh, dendrite so these are the two neurons that we need to consider so let us start labeling this is the axon end bulb and this is the dendrite this is the dendrite so this is the axon end bulb this is the dendrite now the gap between these two neurons is called as synapse so this particular gap which we see this particular gap this is called as synapse the neuron which is above the synapse is called presynaptic neuron the neuron which is below the synapse is called as postsynaptic neuron the membrane that lines the presynaptic neuron is called as presynaptic membrane so this is nothing but presynaptic membrane and the membrane that lines the dendrite is called as post synaptic membrane now in the presynaptic membrane we have certain ion channels through which ions will enter and the main ion that enters in the axon end bulb is the calcium ion so in the presynaptic membrane we find certain ion channels so these are those ion channels from where ions will enter into the presynaptic neuron so these are ion channels and mostly here it is calcium ion channels the post synaptic membrane also has ion channels along with a specialized chemoreceptor so apart from having ion channels they also have receptors which will be readily waiting to get bound with the neurotransmitter released so these are ion channels of the post synaptic neuron and these are the receptors so these are the receptors in the presynaptic neuron we have vesicles inside the vesicles neurotransmitters are stored so these are vesicles and inside the vesicles neurotransmitters are stored now let us see what basically happens when impulse is generated and how the transportation of this particular neurotransmitters takes place and how impulse conduction takes place when an impulse is generated it will cause the ions that are there in the synapse especially calcium ions to come into the axon and bulb so calcium ions which are outside when impulse is generated through the calcium ion channels will move into the axon end bulb and they will come and bind to the presynaptic membrane so the calcium will come and bind here once it binds here this particular vesicle will move to the axon end bulb burst open and release a neurotransmitter this neurotransmitter will now come and bind to the receptor which is present on the post synaptic membrane once it comes and binds to the receptor on the post synaptic membrane here we have sodium ions which are there which will now come inside through these ion channels 
normally the charge that is there on the post synaptic membrane is as follows outside is positive and inside is negative when sodium ions come inside after the binding of neurotransmitter to the receptor on the post synaptic membrane the charge inside will now become positive outside will become negative and because of change of charge impulse is generated which will carry forward because depolarization is taking place here and the impulse is conducted from this particular dendrite end to the next neuron and it keeps on going now what is important here is after impulse generation whatever impulse has been generated it has to stop because if the neurotransmitter is in the bound state it will continue to generate impulse so because we don't want continuous generation of impulse the post synaptic membrane will release an enzyme so here the post synaptic membrane let us say for example acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter the post synaptic membrane will release an enzyme which is called as acetylcholine esterase so it will release an enzyme acetylcholine esterase acetylcholine esterase will now break down acetylcholine into two compounds acetic acid and choline acetic acid and choline now acetic acid and choline will now be taken up they will be now taken up back by the presynaptic neuron for the synthesis of acetylcholine and in the case of adrenaline the enzyme is monoamine oxidase the monoamine oxidase breaks down adrenaline and in the case of acetylcholine it is acetylcholine esterase now in order to sum up the steps that are involved in neurohumoral transmission we can sum them sum up them as follows number 1 we have impulse generation we have impulse generation in axon and bulb because impulse is generated what is happening we have entry of calcium ions into the axon end bulb because of this what is happening the vesicles containing the neurotransmitters burst and release neurotransmitters into synapse through a process called as exocytosis through the process of exocytosis once the neurotransmitters are released they will go and bind to so now neurotransmitters bind with receptors what are these receptors these are chemoreceptors chemoreceptors they go and bind to chemoreceptors on the dendrite on the dendrite and once they bind to chemoreceptors on the dendrite we have depolarization that is taking place this depolarization is causing impulse generation and why this is happening because of influx of sodium ions because of influx of sodium ions we have depolarization that is taking place the inside membrane which was uh, negatively charged is now converting into positive charge once this depolarization takes place we have impulse that is generated and that impulse is carried to the next neuron is carried to the next neuron
so if you want to sum up the process this is how we can sum up the entire steps that are involved in neurohumoral transmission and for a quick recap we can go through this diagram once again you can see here that there are two neurons one is the axon end bulb and one is the postsynaptic neuron which is the dendrite it could be cyton and if it is a muscle then it is it will form neuromuscular junction and uh, the axon end bulb has neurotransmitters stored in vesicles which are released by the entry of calcium into this particular presynaptic neuron and then the calcium which is released will now come and bind to chemoreceptors these receptors will now cause influx of sodium because membrane permeability increases and the charge will now change as the charge changes depolarization takes place impulse is generated and the impulse is carried forward once this impulse is carried forward the postsynaptic neuron will release a enzyme that is in the case of acetylcholine it will release acetylcholine esterase that will break or uh, that will break down this acetylcholine into acetic acid and choline which are taken up by the post uh, presynaptic neuron to again synthesize acetylcholine i hope this video was informative and it helped you give an overview of neurohumoral transmission please do stay tuned to medcology tutorials for more such videos thank you for watching